streaming today, so we're going to ask you to take your name and your fill in to get a wireless mic to you. If you have a question, raise your hand and we'll get it to you. Streaming good? Well, thanks for coming. Um, obviously, big day in college football. Um, we, we just finished uh, with our class of, of candidates and felt like um, our coaches, uh, with the direction of uh, Al Luganville and uh, Antonio Pierce, uh, did a great job of orchestrating uh, one of our better collections of players that we uh, were on for, for two years, some of these guys, and uh, didn't get everybody we'd like. But we felt like that we, we made a dent in some, some areas that we needed to improve in. And um, I think as this season continues to go, uh, we're what, a couple weeks away from spring football. Some of those guys will be here. The majority of them will come uh, when we start our summer camp. Uh, we're excited about that. But I think for the most part, um, we've done some pretty good things of, of collecting players. This is our second full class since we arrived here, us three especially, because we've been together here now for three years, it's hard to figure out um, that we've actually been here for three years. <laughs> we've survived it. And um, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, but I think going forward, um, uh, there's a lot of things we have to continue to, to work on and improve on, but I think we're heading in the right direction. Hold Rubino, Devil's Digest. This is a question to either Antonio or Al. Coming into the the late signing period, how hard was it to navigate between taking uh, people from the transfer portal versus versus high school recruits when you have more than just one need aside from offensive line? Go ahead. Uh, I think most importantly, uh, the, the way we look at the portal is uh, kind of need basis. Obviously, for us, offensive line is that need basis right now, the ability to play right now. As you can see, we signed two grad transfers, something we similar, very similar we did our first year here uh, with um, Roy Hemsley and Casey Tucker. We did the same thing uh, this year. We think guys that can come in right away and help us push some of our younger guys as well and give some of our younger guys a chance not to have to play right away. Um, and then obviously at the quarterback position, we feel like the high school route is a little bit better in that, in our, in that situation for us. And, we looked at some tight ends, uh, but we felt that you know Jack was exactly Jake was exactly what we wanted uh, in the tight end, the size, what Zach is bringing to the offense, and what we want to do offensively with our running game and, and the offense that Zach was bringing. Chris Cartman, son of a source, Herm uh, and AP. Uh, this this change with you uh, defensively uh, relative to the personnel that you've been recruiting for the last couple of years that you have now and that you're recruiting into the future, how is that going to all work in, in terms of getting the scheme on the field that best suits who you have to work with? A pretty smooth transition, really. Um, you're thinking more of, of, of the front piece of it, and uh, we've dabbled in that. Uh, we, we, we play some four-man front at times. Uh, we've, we've done that in numerous games this year. We did it in the bowl game. If you you recollect how we played. So I think when we went out recruiting, you know, you, we're recruiting athletes at certain positions. And I think if you do that correctly, you're going to be all right. Uh, I think defensively on, on the front interior of it, um, as you guys know, we're looking for guys with size, especially the outside perimeter players that can rush the quarterback. We're always looking for rushers. Uh, but I think for the most part, it'll be a smooth transition now. There's going to be some verbiage, maybe some things that change. But that's on both sides of the ball. <laughs> so all of a sudden, we have a, somewhat of a new offense uh, with our new offensive coordinator. Uh, we have somewhat of a, a defense that might be shifted a little bit different than it was before with, with two new coordinators. But uh, other than that, I think the players, it'll be a smooth transition. Doug Haller with The Athletic. Herb, can you just um Explain how maybe the, the duties will be d shared or divided between uh, Antonio and, and Marvin in that role. Well, I, I think that's just, uh, you know, the great part about this is that um, Antonio played for Marvin in Washington. So, I mean, it, you can't make this stuff up. You just can't. And um, I, I think with that being said, um, they will figure out a way how to do that. You talk about two guys that have, that have uh, been together former player, former coordinator, then became a head coach, obviously, and, 
AP uh, went on to continue to play and, and, and obviously, you know, became a head coach in, in high school football. So I, I think it'll, it's just a matter of how we want to orchestrate it. Look, we still got to hire a coach. We still have to hire a defensive line coach, which uh, we, we have some men coming in here this week. We should have that done by next week, I would assume. Uh, but that's college football anymore. I mean, everyone goes through it. Uh, when you think about our program, I think we've done a nice job of, of really uh, doing some things where other people look at us and say, you know what, I want a couple of those coaches or I want somebody off that staff. And, and that's when we first got here, that's what we said. This is, this is a program where we're going to try to lift people's potential, uh, where eventually you, you, you can't keep all of them, uh, but we've kept more than have left. And I think as we continue to win and continue to do things the way we do, we're going to always miss some coaches, but there's always an accession plan. We always have a plan behind the plan. If this happens, we got to be ready to do this. So we're, we're never caught off guard. I think we understand that's part of it. That's part of college football. And um, we don't run out of the, and, and say the building's on fire. We just kind of adjust. And that's what we do. And we've done, I've done that for two years. I mean, you think about it. I mean, think about when I first got here. Okay, just still here, still there, right? I mean, we're okay. We'll be fine, you know. But we, we, we have this plan of we understand that we develop coaches, we develop people in the scouting department. Uh, that's part of the, the aura of this place. When we talk about pro football, the pro model, that's what you try to do. And I think we've done that. And we've gotten some new coaches right, that want to be part of the program, which is good. And that's just what we, what we try to do here. Herm, with um, the success that you had with recruiting receivers and running backs to offensive skill, can you talk about that? And also, uh, as a part of that, how much did you utilize uh, Jaden Daniels as a tool in the recruiting efforts? Well, Jaden's a big part of it, but, but also I think our players in general. Especially when you host players, they come on visits. We, we our, our players are the hosts. I mean, they understand. You got to recruit. This is part of the deal. And and, and yeah, if, if you're a wide receiver, and you have aspirations of, of of playing in an offense that will feature you with a quarterback like that, why wouldn't you sign up? But but here again, it, it's on Zach. And when we say all this, you know, and at the end of the day, it's it's the offense, his vision, and my vision match up pretty good. I think what you'll lose sight of is that we talk about all these receivers. Um, we might have a parking lot full of tight ends all of a sudden. Okay, I'm just saying, just wait and see. Uh, you know, and so there's a lot of things still we're gonna dabble with. You know, he's the mad scientist in there when I'm sitting in his meetings. You know, and all this stuff, and I'm like, the only problem is I see all this blue turf. Now AP's used to because the sun was up there. Like, that's that's too bad. It's hard looking at these dudes, man. You know, but. Uh, it's part of it. It's just part of it. Um, I kind of like it, you know, because I'm learning something. And, and, I, and I, t I say that all the time. When we walk in this building, we all are searching for knowledge. You guys are searching for knowledge from us. Coaches pass along knowledge. It's, it's a knowledge that's what this building provides, knowledge for everybody. And if you're not sitting there and willing to learn, then shame on you. And so for me, it's been a lot of fun. You know, the defensive part of it if, it, if it gets shifted a little bit, somewhere in my, in my memory banks, I got that one figured out pretty good. Offensive part, there's some things that I look at, I, go, I like that. You know, so we'll see. Hold Rubino, Devil's Digest. This is a question for Zach. Uh, as you know, quarterbacks tend to commit sometimes in the spring, let, let alone the summer. It's really hard to get a quality one this late in the process. But on the other hand, uh, Dylan McLemore is one of those late bloomers, I guess, didn't play much at all his junior year. What did you see from him in even an abbreviated senior season to think that he's a good fit here? Yeah, Dalen's one of those guys that you know, was under-recruited and obviously had limited, uh, some limited reps. But his talent and his skill set, uh, I mean, he's 6'3", he's over 200 pounds, he's athletic, he's got good arm strength. Um, you know, he was just in a situation where he played another position earlier in, call, or in, in uh, high school. You know, this year he suffered a, a collarbone break, which limited his, you know, exposure. And then, you know, even talking to his head coach, I mean, they were in a situation with their scheduling where um, they had a lot of Saturday games. So he wasn't able to go on a lot of recruiting visits. You know, 
well. So he wasn't able to go out and get out there and see a bunch of spots. So um, we feel like we we got a great one, and he's he's got a demeanor similar to Jaden and. You know, when he comes up on the trip and those guys are hanging out, you can see him interact, and there's a lot of uh, similarities there, which is exciting. And, uh, you know, he's got the frame, he's got a you know, big body, and uh, we feel like he's going to be a guy that's got a, a high ceiling and can develop into a really good quarterback. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Uh, this is for Zach. How hard was it to get a quarterback to come after you had the two that left? Knowing that Jane's going to be the guy for a couple of years now, and most guys want to play right away, so you know, was it hard to get a quarterback to come here, knowing they might sit for a couple of years? It's always a trick, especially at at this um, position, you know, with with the quarterbacks, and only one guy's going to play, and and so, you know, with Jaden's you know, progression, his success already, you know, being uh, early in his career, it can be tough at times to go find a guy that wants to come and join, but you know, it's. It, you're also trying to find a, a kid that, you know, really just wants an opportunity and that's hungry and really wants to be at ASU. And we and we found that guy. And um, you know, there's always positives and there's always negatives to every situation. And and there there are some really good positives. I mean, being around Jaden for the next few years, I mean, what a great mentor, you know, to be able to to learn from and, and grow. And uh, you know they're they're both great quality kids, and we feel like we've got a good room where we're adding on, and we're building into this offense. And uh, you know I think Dalen's going to fit. Uh, he, you know he could have transferred himself, you know, in different high schools. You know he chose not to. He chose to stay there and, and play. And um, you know as coaches, you're looking at all the transfers and all the different guys, especially the quarterback position, going from one spot to another. You know especially in the high school, and now more and more in college. And you value those guys that want to stay, you know, in their hometown for playing for their school and not, you know, transfer into the big hotshot school that year or whatever, to, just to try to get recruited a little bit more. So, you know, there, there's some value to signing those type of guys too. AP, throughout your career, what, what qualities did the best defenses you played on have, and then how will you bring that out in in Arizona State's defense? Yeah, I, I think first and foremost, intimidation, physical aggressiveness, speed starts up front. You know, you got guys that can rush the passer, and, and all the way to rush the passer, all they happen to run the ball, you, you be able to retrace. That was with me in the, you know, when I was with the Giants and when I was with Marvin Lewis at the Redskins. Um, but whenever you can attack the quarterback and dictate the flow of the game and make it one dimensional, this year I thought we did a really good job of stopping the run consistently. Only had one team, I think, or one rusher this year. Rush over 100 yards on us, and I was a UCLA kid. He did a great job. But overall, it's, it's to me, it's about being physical, uh, stopping the run, making those guys one-dimensional. And as we evolve this defense and get it to what we want it to look like, Marvin and myself, um, what you will see is an aggressive style. I mean, look at Marvin's background. Look at my history of teams I've been with. When me and Marvin together, I think we were either fourth or fifth in the National Football League on a team that was, what, 6-10 and 10 maybe <laughs> with the Redskins. So wasn't getting a lot of help from the offense. Zach give me a little help, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Need some points. But they just got to be aggressive, man. And, again, you know, uh, it starts in my room with the linebackers and them guys setting the tone. And you look at it. Every great defense has great linebackers. You know, and you put that together with the secondary that we have here now, which I think is very talented and very deep, uh, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Al, just – Drawing from all of your experiences at ASU, even prior to this staff, where does ASU sit right now from a recruiting and player personnel development sort of standpoint? And can you compare that to when you guys arrived and, and took the job? Compared to two years ago? Yeah. We're not there yet up front. And I think that's a work in progress. And that's the difference right now, um, really, in our whole conference. But that's the area that we really, really have to, to spend time on, uh, work hard. I been just visiting with AP and Coach and, and Zach. Uh, wouldn't shock me if we're in the grad transfer business for another year in the offensive line, maybe two years. Uh, we're just. We're not there yet, but we're working hard at it. Um, and that's what I would say 
if you look at the the really dominant ASU teams through the years, you'll see it was a common denominator of who they were up front. Uh, back in the day, we played with three down guys, and the smallest one was 6'5", 260. That was the smallest. So, you know, you, you, you can make some damage when you were playing with guys like that. So we're not there yet. We're getting there. And then we'll see what happens when we get there. It, that's the exciting part. I think we have some, some young kids that are um, not a lot of people got to see this year that have a chance. Well, they're going to get a chance because they're all we got, right, Coach? Fit, <laughs> fit, got no more. Uh, for Herm, a couple years ago when you got hired here, a big criticism was that you hadn't recruited in the past a uh, couple decades in college football. And now, when you look at what you've done and what you know your staff's done, you guys are one of the top in the league for this class. How does it feel to see that, even though you keep saying you know you guys aren't done, you're just getting started here? Well, I think when you when you when you decide to come back. You have to look at the um, the environment in which you're walking into, and um, I was a little bit taken back with the time that's spent on recruiting. To be quite honest, when I first arrived here, I said uh, what maybe 70 percent. I was wrong. I was wrong. No, it's 90 percent. It's your whole life. That's what you do. And and with that being said, um, the one thing I've always learned is. Um, Work is work. It's just according to how much time you want to put in. I've always said this, in the life of a coach, it's like going to those casinos in Vegas. There's no clock. That's why there's no clock in those places. That's why those chandeliers keep getting hung. Those people just stay in there. They keep paying for them dead gum chandeliers. Right? And that's, that's a football coach's life. You know, you go to work, you don't look at the clock. You just work until the work's done that day, and then you go home. And uh, if you put in the work, I just believe this, if you put in the work in anything you do in life, uh, you, you will reap some benefits. We're starting to do that. But as you said, this is our, really our, what, this is our second class of, of a full recruiting cycle that we've gone through. And in college football, anyone will tell you, it takes you, you know, it takes you three classes, to be quite honest, to try to get the people you want to get. And, and we're, starting to, we're starting to chip the rock down a little bit. And I think the more you win, the more you have players that, that do the recruiting for you once we get the kids on campus. Now, we've got a great group of, of people that orchestrated all this, and this guy sitting to the left. I mean, the hours of work time they put in and the hours that our coaches meet every day uh, after practice. You know, we come off the field, and, and Al's got a meeting. We're talking about recruiting. And we go through it. We went through a four-hour meeting yesterday with him just to figure out the players on our roster, who's coming back, players we're adding. In the spring, we're going to add a, a bunch of more in the summer. So that's part of it. It was way more than I imagined, to be quite honest. But it's okay. You adjust and you, you move on. And, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I really am. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. Hold Rubino, Devil's Tide. This question for Zach. Uh, can you talk about Jake Ray, what he brings to the table, and just the tight end position in general? I know you wanted, you wanted to really implement some of the stuff you did at Boise State. How far along or how uh, close are you to implementing what you did at uh, Boise State? Sure. Yeah, Jake uh, provides a big body. I mean, he is. He's uh, 6'4 and 240, and he's a very physical blocker. You know, we were surprised on film, you know, with as thick as he was. He's, he's pretty athletic as well. I mean, he can bend and can do some things that you often don't see uh, guys that big do. Uh, and so um, we, we feel like he's got a skill set to be both on the ball and, and, and be physical up front, but also be a movement guy if need be. And, and really, for me, I'm trying to figure out these tight ends and who, you know, who we've got on campus right now, too. So going into spring, we'll be able to evaluate those guys, see where uh, you know, we're at through spring, and then adding Jake um, you know, later in, in, uh, in June, you know, then we'll kind of see where we're at. But um, you know, Jake's one of those guys that um, you know, he played at a high level uh, in, in Florida. And 15 and 0 as a as a senior there, and you know, he's uh, been able to play physical, but also remain healthy. You know, and so uh, that's that's a big piece, especially for that position, because there's a lot that goes into the tight end position. So uh, 
we'll, we'll start his learning process and be sending him some info and getting him going and hopefully he does a good job for, uh, you know, up until the point he gets here. But excited about him and what he brings to the offense. And yes, we are going to utilize tight ends and, and um, you know, getting a few of those, those bodies on campus was a necessity for us. Hey, Mark McLoon, 3TV, CBS 5 Sports. Messages, or the question is for Coach Edwards and also Coach Pierce, if you could uh, offer your thoughts. Just as far as what you were able to do in California, how much does this kind of set the bar for classes going forward? And are you able to enjoy the fruits of your labor today? Well, I think, you know, we talk about California, but this is our base, Arizona. And um, if you look at the last, uh, and we got here late, the last three classes, we've been able to get, what, seven guys out of Arizona. And I think sometimes that gets overlooked. When you look at the guys that we were after, a lot of other teams were after, there was about 30 players, 29 players that we coveted with a lot of other teams. Um, they all ended up going different places. Uh, we got seven of them uh, in the last three years. And when you look at the, the list, um, a lot of these kids, uh, the, another seven went to Pac-12 schools, uh, and the other ones went out of the conference. And so I think sometimes that gets overlooked for some reason. It just does. And then from there, obviously, the next state close to us is California. And, and so when you think about California, you think about Arizona, Nevada, we said that's kind of our footprint. We, now, we've, we've, learned a, we've learned a grave lesson, too. Um, in certain positions, we get out of our footprint. We've always said quarterback is out of our footprint. Wherever good ones are, we're going to find them, right? Uh, Al mentioned it, and, and AP can talk on this, linemen. Okay, there's, there's only so many out here. And the rest of them are in the Midwest and on that Eastern board. We, we figured that out, ask AP. He was over there for about a month, it looked like. It was good. Every time I said, where are you at? I'm in this state. Where are you going? You turn to the United States. But <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it, you got to figure this thing out. And, and when you start figuring it out, you go, okay, where do we need to go if we're looking for these kind of guys? And where are they at? And we, we figured it out. And so that, that's part of it too. You know, that, that's kind of what we, what we do when we recruit. But don't lose sight. We'd like to give, we'd like to give every five-star guy in Arizona a scholarship. And they got taken. Can't force them. And we've offered. How many guys do we offer 20, 20, 22? 22. How many? 15. No one's ever done that. No one. So they're out there. We got to recruit them. We got to love them. We got to show them what this program can offer them, and hopefully, some of them will come there. So don't let us so lose sight of that. I, you know, we, we get always hit in the head about California. Arizona is where this school is located. We're going to go after every good player in Arizona, and we're going to offer them. How many we offer again, AB? Twenty-two, coach. Twenty-two. Okay. In a twenty-two you, class, you, you fifteen to twenty-two class. But it's that what coach is saying. Home base is, is Arizona, All right? First base is California. And then we move on so forth uh, with the position need and what we need for that class. And obviously, uh, we did hit a home run in California this year. We felt really good about the guys we got out of there, especially that receiver core uh, that we got out of there. You look at the Johnny Wilson, when he walks in this building, it's a massive human being. I mean, he's 239, he's skinny. And I said he was massive, so he's on tower over you. And you just look at the, sp the speed and the skill set of Elijah Badger, uh, who announced that the, his All-American game, uh, LV Buckley, uh, I think I've known him since he was in uh, eighth grade. Outstanding football players don't really uh, shock a lot of people when they get here with his production. And then our biggest recruiter, right in ASU history, Chad Johnson, Junior, uh, Junior. <laughs> little little Ocho Cinco, uh, has done an outstanding job. And again, every time you see him, was out there in California, saw him again, just getting bigger and better. Uh, but just not even that. I mean, you look at the linebackers we brought in with Banks and McCullough. They're here on campus. And credit to those guys. We asked them to graduate early. They're here. We got 10 of them here along with our grad transfer offensive linemen. That's huge for our program and our development in the spring. And it's critical. And, and at the end of the day, man, listen, we, we want the best players we can get, no matter where they come from. And if they have to come from California, great. If it's Arizona, great. We just want the best players. We want guys that want to be Sun Devils. That's going to represent this program the right way and the way we want to play football. Herm, you touched on this. Uh, I just want to be clear. It, moving forward, is is the plan to keep the three through five as the base defense, or will you be more multiple? We 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 we, we will dabble in both, like we did this year. You know, I mean, we 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 play some four three, even though we were the three three five. I mean, it's just 
how you want to schematically, what you want to call it. Um, but we're, we're going we're gonna to dabble in both, and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going give to any, give any secrets away in the press conference to other teams. They'll figure it out after the first game what we're going to do. Herm and AP, just building off of what you were touching on there with the Arizona recruiting, um, what do you think about the political challenges of that with high school coaches, coaches that maybe want you to take guys that you don't think are good enough, or how do you guys manage all that stuff? Well, I manage it this way. I think if you're a high school coach, um, you want to promote your players, and that's what you should do. And now, the great part about promotion is this. We actually get to recruit them, the ones we want to recruit. It's like the draft. There are a lot of players on the board. You get seven picks. There's probably about four or five guys when you get ready to pick that you want, and you pick them. Same way we recruit. We understand coaches are trying to you know, ele elevate their players. We love it. That's what coaches should do. Players help you win, just like this program. Players have helped us win. I understand that part. But no one's going to tell us who to recruit. That's our job. That's what we do. We decide with our DNA what type of player we want in this program, and those are the guys we're going to recruit. And, and we're not going to change. We're not going to get into this. It's good. It's OK. It's all good. We want them to promote their players. But we'll decide the players that fit our DNA. And there's a process of how we recruit, and we'll go through the process. And the process generally weighs out. You got anything on that, Al? You should probably come yeah, on that, too. Yeah, I'll shoot it. I mean, just like we can't tell what high school coach to play, which player will play the call sometimes when we watch their games either. So I think it just goes hand in hand. But then the end of the day, playing Las Vegas Bowl was cool. Winning the Sun Bowl, getting cornflakes and watching coach. Get <laughs> done. That was cool. But you know what's really cool? Playing in the Rose Bowl. And to play in the Rose Bowl, we need different type of players. And it's not a political deal. It's just about the best players that's going to help us get to that level. And I don't care where they come from. It could be Alaska. We go to South America. We go wherever you're going to find them. Just give me a small island. We'll get a little rowboat. We'll go out there and find them. That, that's, that's what this is about. It's not, it's not about this school, that school, this state, man. It's about giving this university the opportunity to play at the highest level and compete at the highest level for a long time. And you just want really good players. We want the same guys that we watched in January that just played a couple of days ago, even in the Super Bowl. We want those kind of players that have those aspirations. That's what we want. That's all we want. We just want the best for the program. And again, you can't get into political. You're not going to ever be right with the media. You're not going to ever be right with a parent or a high school coach. I know that by being both of them and all three of them. You're not ever going to be right, so you just let it be. Al, go ahead, Al. Well, I think that uh, the proof will end up being another year, two years down the line. And uh, it was interesting because We've tried to explain the profile of a lineman. And to us, length is everything. And uh, I would use an example of a young man, uh, you uh, the, in the media that follow us closely, of Mary Johnson. Mary Johnson came in here last fall at 218 pounds. We were disappointed because we thought he was, he should have been in the 230 range because that's what he was when we recruited him. Yep. He's now weighing 258, and they're not an ounce of fat on him. So if you can bring in one or two people like that a year, and then the numbers start adding up, so when your rotation goes out there, there's the 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guy with long arms, Check how many times we knock down a pass. That's huge in a, in a football game. And we just, we don't do it because we're not very tall. But you watch, I the other day in that Super Bowl game, it was very, very clear when, remember uh, Chris Jones? Yeah. Big third down play, hand goes up in the air, receiver's wide open, he knocks the ball down. The guy is 6'7", with about an 84-inch wingspan, and if he jumps, it makes a difference. So people, we look at that. That right away was something I said, that's not coaching. That was drafting. Yep. Right. You know, you, they're mandrakes. 
Hey, Mandrix. Yeah. Close. Close. Back. And, and, and so, I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Al, Al makes a great point, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'll just say this, and we start spring ball on what on the 24th, right? I ain't even gonna say nothing. Just, if you come to practice, look at the left tackle. Just look at our left tackle. That's all I'm gonna say. Just go look at him. Those are the kind of, that's what we want to look like. Got to be a good football player now, okay? But that's what we, that's what we're, our aspirations are to look like that. On both, and I'm going to just tell you, go out, first day of practice, just if you're not doing anything, just kind of walk out there and go look at the left tackle. Just see what it looks like. And then you'll go, oh, okay. Figure it out. We play in the Pac-12. We play in the Pac-12. You have to have length. You have to have size, you have to have speed, period. And you got to be a good football player. And there's always an exception to the rule. But we're never going to let the exception be our rule. We're always going to go after guys that with length, height, speed, have the DNA, they're passionate about football. Those are the kind of guys we're going after. Are we going to always get those guys? No. But we can't sit here and say, well, let's don't try. That's, that's part of it. That's part of recruiting. So, you know, just keep saying it. Just look at the left tackle, and that'll give you an idea of what they're supposed to look like. Yeah. I almost forgot what I was going to ask. You're going to look at the left tackle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to ask. You look at the, not the right one. You can look at the right one, too. He's the freshman guy. They played pretty good. But look at the left one now. Okay, obviously, the two grad transfers on the offensive line and the backup quarterback were the major needs. Uh, is there anything else you're looking to add? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll add some more. We're not done. I mean, there's always some things you can do. I mean, you know, there's a reason we start spring ball so early. It's not by accident. You evaluate your players, right? I mean, that's what a spring ball is about, evaluation. And then when we evaluate, we look at certain areas and go, okay, is there something going to come available? Call the portal. Isn't that something? It just kind of pops up. That'll generally start into March. We're done with ours. They, the other team started March, and all of a sudden, by April, there's some guys that put their names in the portal. It's a wonderful thing. Call free agency, college football. So there's some things you can always do, and, and we want to be available if there's some things we need to do to improve our team. That's what we're going to try to do. So, Herm, uh, yes, sir. You, you, you mentioned spring practice starting in less than three weeks. What's on your uh, to-do list? And do you feel that maybe the offense with a lot of inexperienced skilled players may be a position that needs more development compared to a pretty uh, veteran defense? Well, I, I think the thing that I've, I've learned already about the offense and the players that I've been around that are here on campus right now, they're excited because they're eager to learn something new. And I think that's the challenge with players. You know, with players get bored. Like anyway, we all get bored. You know, it's, the world they live in, everything's on, on this. You know, five seconds, they want to go to something else. Well, now they got to learn a whole new offense. The verbiage, alignments, two new receiver coaches, right? I mean, so it's, all of a sudden, this new offensive coordinator becomes like, oh, this is interesting. You know, different formations, different packages of personnel. That, that, the, the vibe I get from the players, they're kind of excited. Defensively, all of a sudden, that kind of changed, right? And so... They're excited. So, uh, so for us, I just think it's, it's work is in progress. Um, no different than when we first got here. We got here late, two years ago, right? And, and we, had, we were on the hustle. And, and we're a little bit on the hustle now, except we've had two years of our program. Our culture is developed. And that, that was critical. Develop a culture. Our players understand the culture now. We've got nine seniors coming back. So it's still a young football team. But the culture has kind of been established with the players in the room. There's expectations all of a sudden. You can see that when I look out my window, when I, I watch those guys on their own on the turf. I saw a bunch of guys show up on Saturday. They're out there on the turf. They're working. I mean, players are doing their own deal. And I'm like, this is interesting. It makes you feel like, OK, the culture is starting to set into these guys. And they're doing it on their own. That's a good thing. So, I think we're all excited about, you know, where we're headed. And, um, you know, it'll be kind of fun when spring ball starts. 
Kirsten Sussell, NBC Phoenix. Antonio, if I could circle back to your new role with the team, you've continued to get more opportunities, more responsibility on the coaching staff. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about just what it means to you to have Herm's trust with more responsibility and then to be co-defensive coordinator with Marvin? No, it's huge. I mean, you put your hard hat on when you, you got here, when I got here two years ago and just your linebacker coach. And then you go out there and you start recruiting and you're a recruiting coordinator. And, you know, you just, like I told Coach, you give me something, I'm going to run with it. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I think first and foremost, when you see people leaving and, and, and movement, you want to see something within. And to have that opportunity, along with Marvin Lewis, who was my defensive coordinator in my second year league, uh, taught me a lot about football. A lot of things that I did when I got into coaching was um, lessons that I learned from Marvin Lewis. And now to have that opportunity to work side by side with him is it's, it's kind of it's, you know it's kind of like a little fantasy, um, but it's a great opportunity. And I think the biggest thing is just the response from the players. I mean, with a lot of changes that we've had, uh, and some of those guys that I've recruited, you know, to, to get that sense and that look in their eye that they're excited about the role that I have, the opportunity that we have as a defensive staff. Um, the future's bright, and again, the same passion that I attacked in recruiting, you can expect that same passion me as a coordinator along with Marvin Lewis and to make sure that we put the best product on the field and I think we're leading that way you look at our defense and what we got coming back it's there the talent's there these guys are now two-year starters across the board some years, some other guys uh, sub starters but everybody's played you know we haven't registered a lot of guys so the opportunity for this defense to shine this year uh, is great and again I'm, I'm blessed from Ray Anderson to Gene Boyd to coach uh, Herm Lewis and to work with Marvin to have this opportunity and I got the, hopefully everything I've done, I won't let anybody down. It's kind of interesting when you think about AP. You know, when we first got here, all the coaches, they have their name on the door, and it's like uh, Antonio Pierce, linebacker coach, and, 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 and wonderful. Now it's Antonio Pierce. He's got so many titles, it goes like this on the bottom now. Because <laughs> it's just run out of titles. I told him yesterday, I said, you got more titles than that. What are you doing all these titles? I don't know what to call the guy, right? But, you know, th th this, this, this football thing's about this and never lose sight of it. It's about trust. It's about trust. When you're a head coach and you hire coaches, no different than Al sitting over there. I trust them. I mean, I trust them. I can't be everywhere and I can't do everything. And you got to put people in position where you know when I'm not in that room, they are echoing the vision. They're echoing the vision. And I don't question it. And when they come to me and say, Coach, I go, if you're telling me that, I trust you. They understand it. These guys have been with me from the beginning, from the, the ground floor, right? And they, they we, every third year coming together now, same three guys sitting up here. And we get it. Uh, Gene Boyd's over there. He gets it. Ray, he gets it. Dr. Crow, he gets it. And we understand what we're trying to build here. And it's gratifying when I know if I'm not in my office and I'm somewhere, and they call me and say, Coach, got it. Good. Good. I don't micromanage people. I don't do that. You hire people that you trust, and you give them the ability to be successful and to work. And these guys, they, they've done it. They, they have flat done it. And, and, and I'm not sitting here, and we don't have any success without these two guys because they are from the ground floor. They're a part of the bricks that we're trying to stack up and, and to continue to grow and build this program on. Jordan Kay with uh, Devil's Digest. For AP, uh, yeah. you talk to players and high school coaches, and they always kind of talk about your doggedness in terms of going to school as many times as possible and calling kids. How much of that philosophy kind of goes back to your time as a high school coach and seeing other schools recruiting your players like that? Yeah, I mean, it was disappointing, you know, being a head coach at Long Beach Poly and, you know, having some really, really good football players. And, you know, you have a couple guys, I get it, that, you know, is not right there with, a, like, a Jackie Jones. And that would be Kobe Williams. And then he becomes a three-year starter at Arizona State. When you see that, then you realize, you know, you, you can't leave any stone and rock unturned. And just like Coach talked about the trust factor, um, for example, I was just on the East Coast, went up from New York all the way down to Miami. It was my first time in a lot of those schools. But I told him I'll be back April 15th, and I'm coming back with my boys this time. I'm bringing a lot more guys with me. Because <laughs> um, I was outnumbered by a couple schools. I said, I got you. I figured this out just like we did California. And, and we'll get them. And to me, it's just about consistency. I mean, you're not going to go out there just like our our path in the 21 class is to really attack the East Coast with defense alignment and offense alignment. 
And we're not going to get all the guys. We're not going to get probably 10. We might get, I told Coach, we'll get four to six, Coach. The next year we'll get more. And then we're going to hit the jackpot. And then we're going to control the whole country. And then we'll be a national recruiting powerhouse. And that's what it's about. It's about being consistent. It's about bringing guys along like Prentice Gill, Chris Hawkins, Derek Hagan. Um, Marvin Lewis got to get on the road now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I mean, it, it, it's about you know, getting those guys out there, man, and representing the brand. And I can tell you this. Taking a fork across the country and that Sun Devil and walking into schools and everybody saying, wow, Arizona State's here. We weren't. I wasn't getting pushed back from the other big schools. You know, I, we was getting pushed to the front of the line, you know, to speak to the coaches and counselors and everybody within the building. And then I even told Coach, being down there near the Super Bowl and have the colleagues that me and Coach worked for for ESPN and the NFL recognize what we're doing here on a recruiting level and, and the coaching level. It, we've, we're making our stamp and we're, we're just getting started. And that's what Coach can tell you. We're really just getting started because we now have a lot more pieces in place that want to run. Now, maybe year one it was AP and a couple. I got, I got about 10 guys now that's ready to run. And when we hit those streets, we're running. Coach, we put the coach on the road the other day. Oh, boy. He called me like, man, I don't know where I'm going. I can't. They, yeah. they don't want to feed me. Yeah. Like, he was, I was worried. Yeah. I was with Prentice and, 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 and Hawk, and I was sitting in the back, and they had their music on. Generally, when I get with AP to put my jazz on, they had their music on. I couldn't. I was like, oh, I can't hear this. And I'm riding with them, and I don't know where I'm at. I don't know. I know I left at 6 o'clock in the morning on the road in L.A., and I'm like, I don't know where I'm at. And about every hour, I call AP, I'm safe, I'm still okay. <laughs> and I, I know we visited a lot of places, I know that. So that yeah. was kind of fun. And if you got that lead, Sun Devil leading the pack, everybody else will follow. And now we got guys that's not following, but they're trying to catch up. And once we get everybody on the same level, uh, you should watch out. Uh, Herm, Nick King, 3TV, CBS 5. I see you guys laughing at Marvin having to get on the road, but... How much, how long have you been having discussions with him about taking on a workload that's going to be bigger and how much, how well, receptive was he? Well, you know, look, Mar Marvin's a dear friend. As AP said, um, a AP coached, uh, a AP played for Marvin. I, I go further back than that, Marvin. And when he first came aboard, you know, the vision was to help us and to, to look at the program from, a, from, a, from an eye that hadn't been here and, and you know, visit with me and, and, and just visit with coaches on – so that was the plan, and obviously things change. And um, when this thing took place, um, Marvin came up to me. And he looked at me and he just said, uh, I got you. I went, really? And he said, I got you. And then I said, is it okay with Peggy? That's his wife. He said, I got you, coach. And we just move on. And that's what we do around here. So it's just, you know, there's, there's, there's always this, I think in life, you, you worry about things. We worry about too many things. When you have good people in place, it just kind of works out. And we were fortunate that Marvin wanted to come and help us last year. It was good he was in the building, along with AP. So it's kind of like, okay, you know, you guys see me all the time and during games, like, I don't panic. That is not my personality. You just say, okay, you hire good people around and you say, you know what, now I got to elevate some more guys. You elevate them. And you say, they, they, they might not have a lot of experience. Now, Marvin got a lot of experience, okay? Uh, AP has a lot of experience as a coach, as a former player. So when you surround yourself with, that, with, with people like that, it's not that hard to turn around and go, you're next, you got to go. So we're okay. For all three of you, and Tony, you're talking about obviously becoming a national power in recruiting, going back to the East Coast. And obviously, as you coaches know, the more you win, and with, I mean, seven on seven, <laughs> Uh, tournaments being all-star teams and stuff like that and kids talking I mean you're going to start getting probably more tape of kids outside that you're recruiting do you guys all look forward to that challenge that's on Al and his yeah, I let Al get that down one. There now. <laughs> he got a crew down. I don't know half the kids that work down there every time I look around it's like who's that guy well we got a we got a neat group of young people that could uh, answer that better than I do because they work at it endlessly but uh, it, it still comes down to having the profile, and that's set from the top. And then uh, it's, and you don't ever leave that, because when the minute you leave it, you're off track. And uh, I think the greatest thing, and uh, I've said this many times, that Coach brings here is his consistency. He, 
Doesn't like me to say that. He's like a road grader. He just keeps going. And he's the same every day. <clears throat> that is very unique in our profession. Believe me. Been there, seen it. Very unique. And it's refreshing. And it makes it much easier to do your job. And the young kids that are with us, they see that. They, they, and that, it's, he'll go back there. He says he's not seen it, but he has seen it. And when he's back there, he jokes around with them and they feel very, very <clears throat> good. It only takes once every 10 days for him to do that, but it, it, it's big. So again, I think this is very, very simple. It's people and giving people an opportunity to move within your organization. And I think it's crucial to be proactive, not reactive. And that's a, there's a big difference between those two terms. Yeah. Big difference. I'm going to just write off a list to answer your question. Rick, Tank, Bobby, Cal, Sean, Jeremiah, Tyler, Bo, Mason, James, Chris, Leo, Ethan, Wesley, Chloe, Madison, Shane, Gabe, Stephen, Cal, Jacob, Jake, JJ, Connor, Tim, Matt, Tanner, Lisa, Ryan, Rabin, and Al. That's how we get it done. Those are all the people behind the scenes, volunteers, people that are getting paid peanuts around here, people that we don't talk about, you don't know about, um, that don't get the credit. AP gets the credit, Al gets the credit, ASU gets the credit, Herm gets the credit. They're the ones doing the grunt work. They're the ones that make my job easier. I'm on the East Coast. Hey, I'm at this school, go. And within three to five minutes, I got a list. Look at this. Look for this kid. Okay. Well, what about this one? Where did he come from? I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit more into it than you think. I mean, because sometimes you go in these schools, kids are moving around. And again, for example, going to the East Coast and not being there as often, you don't know everything that you're walking into. And to have those guys sitting in the office knowing, hey, we're on the road. We need you at this, the dial of uh, at, at 80 second to call you and to get that response time back. That, that's what's making this program well. It's not the guys in the front sitting right here. It's people at the bottom, man. It's that's grinding that in that room, and it's dark. It's a little tight, little, 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 little cabanas or cabanas. That they're in. You know what I mean? They're just there. Cubicles. You know what I mean? They're just sitting in. It's dark. I was close. I wish it was like that. It should be no cabanas. I was in the cabanas. But hey, that's man. That's what it's all about, and that's why I said it takes it takes everybody in the building to make this thing a championship, and we're getting there. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my wife likes the channel. Yes, sir. She likes it.